Hey guys, how's it going? We're in the greenhouse today to do a little bit of work. I wanna talk about strawberries, specifically growing strawberries in containers. So we planted up this green stock vertical garden with an everbearing type strawberry called Seascape earlier this year. It was like late spring, early summer. So I wanted to give you an update on how they're doing uh, and then just share some information on growing strawberries in containers, some things that I've learned throughout the years. And then we are going to fill up another green stock vertical garden with the babies from these strawberries right here. So these strawberries are clearly loving their situation. They look amazing. They have produced so many strawberries this year. I mean, even with all the runners they've produced, which is a lot. I mean, look at this. This is nuts. They've still produced a ton of berries. Uh, they have started to bloom again. They kind of go in and out. We've got a few little berries here, but the kids love this situation right here because it's all at their height. It's easy for them to harvest them and it's so nice to have them off the ground, honestly. You know, we have a big row of strawberries out in the cut flower garden and they're amazingly productive. They do really well out there, but you have to get on your hands and knees to do anything with them. And you know, strawberries don't have a really long lifespan. So I was thinking when those are starting to peter out out there, I think I want to either revert all to, you know, growing something, a growing situation like this, or I want to create a raised bed that's like waist high so that we don't have to do any harvesting down on our hands and knees. So like I said, strawberries life cycle, they have two or three good years in them before they start to peter out. I think commercial growers will most of the time tell you the first year when you plant them to take off any runners or blooms and let that plant establish kind of like fruit trees. I don't do that typically. I just kind of let them do their thing, uh, except for now I'm going to be cleaning the runners off at this point. And then after that year, after they've established, they have two to three really productive years and then they start to peter after that and you kind of have to replenish your crop. The good thing about it is that your strawberries will send out runners, which is one of the ways that they reproduce themselves. Look at this. It's just crazy. So if you're growing them in a row sort of situation outside, you can selectively leave some of these runners, let them root in because they will start to form root. Whoops, whoop. They will start to form roots at a node like that if they hit moist soil. And then when that mother plant starts to wane, this one will have already started to root and started to produce. The thing is though, you don't want to let all of the plants set, otherwise they will choke themselves out and you'll get smaller berries. It's kind of like everything else. You need to make sure every plant gets proper light and airflow and that they're not trying to fight with each other for nutrients. There's a lot of information online. I think it's like, um, I can't remember, it's like a mat growing system is what they call it. Uh, but you have the mother plant, you let two or three babies, you know, root in around it. Uh, and then they kind of form this network of runners and kind of create a mat sort of a situation in their row. And then every year you have to be diligent about getting in there. I mean, clearly you need to be diligent about getting in there and taking some of the runners out so that not all of them, uh, not all of them root and kind of take over the land because they will. Now this one, did I already mention it was out by the cut flower garden? We moved it in here. Um, and we moved it in here because it was the only thing that we didn't have set up on a drip irrigation out there. So we were having to run out and water it, which is easy. You just put the hose in here, fill it up to the line, and then the water goes through here. And then there is a watering tray, which I'll show you. We're gonna put one together again today. But there's a watering tray on the top of each one of the soil reservoirs that has little holes that individually feed each pocket all the way down. So every day you go, it takes like a minute, you fill it to here and that's it. Since it was the only thing that we had to run out there and water every day, we decided to bring it in here because one, I did wanna get a second one set up and get some babies going, but it's also in an area where I'm already hand watering every day, so it makes it a lot easier. Also this one right here, like you just saw, you can get this little spinny thing. <laughs> what do you call it? Lazy Susan sort of thing. Uh, so that if you are in a situation where you don't have light all the way around, like let's say that this is on a balcony or a porch or something, and that this is the, the wall of your house and the sun usually comes in from this direction. Well, that means the backside will normally get shade. But if you've got it on a rotating base, then you can go and rotate it like a quarter of a turn every day or every other day or whatever, so that you make sure that this planter all the way around we'll get equal amounts of light. Out here in the greenhouse, it's pretty open and we'll have lots of light. So I think they'll be happy. In fact, let me show you another vertical garden that we have set up. It's just nuts. I haven't cleaned it out yet. I need to so that I can start some more stuff. So this is the one we set up alongside the one with the strawberries. We did it both on the same day, but this one's actually hooked up to an automatic watering system. You can get all the parts for that. It's like this sort of a system. 
You can see it running up the back side. And at the very top right here, it's got this kind of just extender of the hose that fills up the water reservoir for you. So we've got a hose hooked to our faucet over here that feeds under, you can see it there, and then goes to this. It's on a timer. So this one actually waters by itself every day. And you can see why I didn't uh, clean it out. We had a squash, a random squash, sprout up in the greenhouse. And we thought, well, let's see what it's gonna do. Well, it's kind of taken over everything including this green stock garden. Uh, it has rooted into some of the pockets and we thought we would just let it go, do its thing until we harvest and then I can get in here and do some cleanup. We've got a patio sunshine tomato. There are some other strawberries in here. There's a sage and a thyme plant. Um, and then there's also some spring crops. There's some lettuce and broccoli and stuff. I just haven't had a chance to clean out yet, but that is something on the docket. Oh, and look, see, there's one from that. Green stock. So the first thing to consider about growing strawberries in containers is the container itself. What kind of container do you need? Uh, well, there are the traditional type of strawberry containers, which are usually a little smaller than this, uh, but they're terracotta or glazed ceramic, and they have little pockets, much like this, but they are a lot heavier and usually a lot shorter just because of the, the heaviness of them. Uh, I haven't ever seen one that's super big, like maybe knee height, uh, and maybe like nine or 10 holes. This vertical garden right here has 30 holes, which is really nice. You can grow 30 strawberry plants at a time and that's a lot, that's, that's a lot. You can get a lot of production out of that in a very small amount of square footage. Uh, but berry plants don't need a super deep container. They're fairly shallow rooted plants. So depth isn't something that you have to consider as much as surface area. You really don't want to put them too close together. You know, uh, putting them about this far apart, they're about a foot apart is perfect. Usually they say about four per square feet is max. I think if I was to hold a ruler up, we'd have about a foot, maybe 10 to 12 inches here between the crowns of each one of these plants. Well, and you can see right here exactly how big these are. So these plants, you know, they're dotted around the edges, which is nice too. When you're planting strawberries, it's nice to have the fruit dangling over the edge rather than, you know, you'll have some toward the back of the plant, but it's not as hard to harvest when you've got fruit ready to go on the edges. The second thing to think about is the type or variety of strawberry that you're growing. Now, if you're growing them in containers, I'm guessing you're gonna want strawberries throughout the whole season. I would stay away from June bearing varieties. They only bear for a very short window and then they're done for the rest of the season. And then you just have, I mean, they create a really pretty look, but they're not producing anything. So ever bearing, they're not so sensitive to temperature fluctuations. They're just a little bit more of a, uh, not a non temper June bearing aren't temperamental, but they're just an easier going variety and you get fruit throughout the season. So the seascape variety that we have here, they are ever bearing. The next thing is consistency of water. So this one right here, all of these in this vertical garden, we watered once a day throughout the summer, even when it was really hot, there was a couple of days where we missed it and they were okay. <laughs> they were a tiny bit wilted, but not bad. We got them watered and they bounced right back. Uh, but we never had to water them more than once a day when it was super, super hot. And these were, you know, when they were out by the flower shed, they were subjected to everything, full sun all day long, uh, wind, full wind, they weren't protected by anything. So they did really well. Now our strawberries that are planted in the ground, we water those every other day. They get drip irrigation and they seem to do really well with that. Um, something to consider is they do like a slightly lower pH, a slightly acidic soil. Um, they just tend to be more productive that way. So ours can deal with chlorosis issues because our pH is pretty high and it binds up iron in the soil. So you may notice some yellowing of leaves, but they still have that dark green veining. We have to give ours chelated iron every once in a while, soil acidifier every once in a while, but in containers, it seems like they hold a little bit better with that. And that brings me to fertilizing, which I'm gonna do today. Berry tone is what we use. Now I did fertilize these when I planted and they usually recommend like twice a year, I think. Oh, established plants. When to feed, feed twice per year. Early spring and late spring, we're gonna go ahead and fertilize again today because we're gonna try to extend our season a little bit here in the greenhouse. So I'm gonna uh, fertilize these right here and the runners that we try to root, I'm not gonna put any fertilizer in the soil for those yet. And the very last thing I wanted to mention before we get into our planting project, just because I don't wanna forget anything, is overwintering something like this. So strawberries typically need a dormant period uh, just like a lot of plants, you know, that we keep outside strawberries outside are perennial here. We're a zone six. I will not be wintering these over. I don't think here in the greenhouse because we heat the greenhouse. It's usually like 50 to 55 to 60 ish degrees in here uh, at any given time during the winter. So if you live in a more mild climate, you could just reposition your container 
near a house, near your house, like the south side of the house where it can catch a little bit of heat, a little bit of sun. If you live in a colder climate, you'll probably need to move it into a structure of some kind, a shed. Uh, they don't need light because, you know, the whole top of the plant dies back. Uh, you can put it in a garage. I might pop these in the high tunnel. We're not going to heat the high tunnel. It will just be like a protective covering over them. You can also wrap them in blankets or some people do bubble wrap, things like that, just to keep a little bit of insulation. And if your container is small enough, you can bury the whole thing. You could dump a bunch of straw over the top of it. Uh, that's another way to kind of hill them in and keep them safe during the winter. I think that is the last thing I wanted to mention before we start in on our project. So let's talk about runners and how to get them to root how to get baby plants from your already established plants. So when your plant sends out a runner like this, let me see if I can get the whole thing out. It's like a whole big network jumble of runners here. Check that out. <laughs> this is one runner off the plant. There are four little baby plants on this thing. Typically the one closest to the plant is gonna be the strongest. Uh, but what happens is that these plants are taking away energy from the mother plant. So if you are wanting your plant to be very productive, you'll wanna clip most if not all of these off, because then all of the energy used to keep these alive will be put into this plant to be more productive with its fruit. But like I said, if you're growing these outside and you wanna perpetuate your crop, if you let your plant set a few of these uh, and root in, that's not gonna really hurt your plant at all. It's when you let all of these runners root, <laughs> which you know I probably should have been on it a little bit more. The thing is though, you can cut these off and pop these little plants down in soil but they have a much harder time rooting. I don't know if you can already see where the roots are gonna come out right here. It's better if you can leave them attached to the mother plant and let that mother plant feed, like continue supplying what it needs to the baby until this one has a chance to root into some soil. And then at that point, cut it off. Whoa, it is this. What you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Did you, get some, did you get something new for your tractor? So in a situation where you have your strawberries planted in the ground, it's really easy to get these to root because everything is at the same level. When you have something like this, it's really tall. It gets a little bit trickier. You can put a little baggie of soil around each one of these, like kind of rubber band some soil around this baby plant, let it form roots as it's dangling here. And then usually it's four to six weeks after you do that, after it makes contact with the soil uh, to the time where it starts forming up its roots. So four to six weeks and then you can clip it off. So like today in our case, I'm hoping to set up this vertical garden right next door to this one. So we can just run these runners over to the soil, pin them down and they can just live next to each other until those babies take root. And then we can separate the two vertical gardens. And I think I'm going to clip off all the rest of the runners today, whatever doesn't make it into our other green stock. So what we'll do here is we're just gonna set our first layer down on top of our Lazy Susan, like that, and make sure it's sort of level here. We're gonna do this one layer at a time. I'll fill this with soil. I'm going to grab the runners, bring them over here, try to pin down six of them. And then we'll put the, the watering tray on in our next level, and then we'll do the, yeah, just every one, every layer one at a time. Something I find handy when putting these together so that a bunch of soil doesn't go through here, I just put a little piece of tape on here until I'm ready to do the next layer. It helps. And I've got my soil right here. More sun right here. I want to be on the north side of it. Okay, so we've got our soil in here. You do want to tamp it down so that you don't have any settling. I've tamped it down pretty good, I think. And I haven't removed my tape yet, but see this strawberry right here? This originates down in this pocket right behind it. So we're going to take it and kind of just nest it in the soil. We don't push it down really far. We're just gonna nest it in there and then use a landscape staple to tack it down like that. That way it can't go anywhere and the bottom of that plant will remain in contact with the soil. Oh, so exciting. Okay, let's do it again. Okay. 
Okay, so tray number one is done, and I noticed that the runners on the bottom are far less robust as the runners you find higher up. Like this one is huge. So I did my best to find the ones that would work well. Um, you can see the runner coming over this way, and then I've just used a three inch landscape staple just to tack it down to where it's making contact with the soil, but I did not bury the plant. So it's just contact with the soil and then just held in place with the landscape staple. So now at this point, you take the tape off. We're gonna put our watering tray in. There are individual holes along the outside perimeter of this. So I make sure that each hole lines up with one of the planting pockets. Just kind of put that right there. And then on goes our next tray. I think, <laughs> it's gonna take me a second, hang on. Oh, there's spiders. There, I think we got it. So uh, very important, we cannot rotate these at all for four to six weeks until these root and I can cut all of the runners off. So once they've rooted, I can cut this off and this off. Yeah, and then we can start rotating them around. So I'm hoping that once I clean this up of all the extra runners, that there will be enough light in between to get these going. See how they just kind of nest right on top of each other? Okay, we're just gonna do the same thing all the way up. All done, all 30 of these pockets are filled with babies. Oh, it's just so exciting. And there's really no reason why any of these shouldn't take. I mean, you never know. So I did leave a few little extras hanging. So, you know, if I should happen to lose that one, I can pop it in its spot, uh, like this right here. This one reaches all the way over to here. It was just getting a little difficult toward the end to find runners long enough to reach from this side to that side. Let's take a look over here, you can see you know, there's this runner here, this one here, but all of the pockets are filled up. I love it. This is just the easiest, most risk-free way of getting more strawberry plants from the ones you already have. Because, you know, the mother plants are still going to be supporting these babies while they form up roots. And then, like I said, when they have formed them, we can cut them off from the supply and they can live on their own. So now that that's done, I'm gonna take after the original here and we're going to remove all of this business now one thing that i did find see this pocket right here that's where the original plant was it sent out a runner look at how huge this baby plant is i'm just going to pop this right back up in here and nest it into the soil and it should root right there and take off so i'll just be inspecting every single one of the pockets to make sure we've got viable plants and then I'll be trimming away the rest.
done, all fertilized, watered in, everything is set to go. So I just used a little sprinkle of berry tone in each one of the pockets. And then instead of watering, I've already watered it from overhead today. So it's already, you know, saturated. Uh, but just to get that fertilizer worked into the soil, I went ahead and just watered each one of the pockets. And then I did the same thing. I didn't do the fertilizer, but I did the watering the same here as well. I watered it from top and I also watered it from the tops. And I will probably be watering the tops and keeping those moist for a while now uh, because you know the water is dripping out right here and it's probably gonna reach more of a root level of the plant and because these don't have roots yet I'll just make sure that that top layer stays moist and we should be good to go oh. so I left a few extras on these plants as well just on this side of the green stalk so that if we need them we can pop them over there but for the most part cleaned them all up uh, this plant the mother plant was looking a little weak. It's got a few little leaves, but I used a runner from the top one and popped it down in the soil just to replenish that pocket. That's the only one I had to do that with. And then this is what I cut off the plants. So you can stick these down in soil. I get little containers. And while it would be better if, you know, I lined up containers and just reached all of them over and left them connected, you can still give it a go and uh, try to get them to root just in soil, just disconnected from the mother plant. I might do a small tray, but I might take them into the studio where it's just a little bit cooler so that these leaves don't have to try to, I mean, it's hot in here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 101 in here right now. And it's not gonna stay like that for very long. We are supposed to be cooling down, but putting a plant like this with no roots yet in a 101 degree structure and expecting it to not flop over and wilt and die, I, that's, a, that's a tall order. So I think we'll just fill up a few little containers just with some, I'm gonna use the organic potty mix, same stuff I used in the vertical garden, and we'll put them in the studio for a little while and see what we can get uh, to grow. I've had it work before, but it's best if you can leave them connected to the mother plant. So let's pick through here. I'm just gonna pick some of the biggest, strongest looking ones and get them potted up. And there they are ever so precariously tucked into the soil because you just, you don't want to bury them too deep. Like, look at this. You really just want that area where the roots are going to be to be under soil. And once they, you know, form roots, you can always take them out and make sure that they're buried high enough. But, you know, to get fruit, you have to make sure that you do not bury the crown of the plant. So like in this case, it will form roots right here and you'll want to bury it just right there. You don't want to bury it up to where the leaves start coming out of the plant. There's a fine line. If you do that, you won't get fruit. So anyway, they're just tucked in. I watered them out here, so I'm gonna let them drain. Then I'll take them into the studio where they can just hang out where it's a little cooler and hopefully we'll get some rooting. We'll see what happens. And it just makes me feel better <laughs> to see these plants groomed up a little bit. Now they each have a chance, you know, to get the proper amount of light. We'll probably see a little surge of growth and probably more berries before the end of the season. I mean, we've got quite a lot of our season still left, usually until the end of October, even more uh, now that they're in here because we can keep them in here a little bit longer before we pop them out. But things are looking good. I'm so excited. Anyway, that is it for today's project. I just really wanted to get out here and get that project done. I knew I needed to groom the one that was already full of strawberries and it was perfect timing because the other one that we put together today, that was full previously of other things. I had some basil that was just like, it was so overgrown and it was all bloomed out. And then I had some tomatoes in there that had gone wild. I had also seeded some things. We did, uh, initially I did it completely full of seeds with radish, cabbage, uh, carrots. What else do I have? Spinach. 
we'd harvested pretty much everything except for with well, the basil that was all done and then we got some beautiful carrots out of there today i love that the pockets are deep enough that you can do some kind of root vegetable production in something like this as well. But I'm excited to have two of these full of strawberries, especially if we can extend our season a little bit in here for the kids, have a few more berries in here. And then next year we will have these just hopefully going and just producing berries like crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful maybe to those of you who are interested in growing strawberries in containers. It really is a fun thing to do. I even love to tuck strawberries into ornamental arrangements. You know, if you've got some real beautiful flowers, but you've got a little space for something to spill over, but maybe you don't want something that's gonna spill over hugely, like a super tunia, it's nice and kind of like whimsical to see strawberries spilling out of ornamental containers like that. I love that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.